Hello and welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. Today we're covering Schwarzbier, that dark German lager. But before we get into the data, just want to remind you, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And also, um, there's kits available uh, uh, at Bacchus and Barleycorn for this recipe and many of my recipes. Um, and they're all at all price points. You can just get grains, grains and hops, or grains, hops, and yeast. Uh, so check it out. Uh, support them. They're a big supporter of this channel. Uh, just just take a look at their website and see if you find anything you want. Uh, let's get right into the data. Uh, I found 54 Schwarzbier recipes, that pretty popular styles. It is absolutely my least favorite beer style in the world, but a patron, a patron wanted it, so we're going to cover it. Uh, five of the recipes were best of show. We had 32 golds. That's a huge proportion. Uh, eight silver, six bronze, and three award-winning recipes. Uh, the style is 8B, a dark German lager that balances roasted yet smooth malt flavors with moderate hop bitterness. The lighter body dryness and lack of a harsh burnt or heavy aftertaste helps make this beer quite drinkable. Um, it's quite surprising. Not a lot of evolution, um, but a huge amount of variation between the recipes. And what I found was um, pre Jamil's book, Brewing Classic Styles, the variation in this in the recipes was tremendous um, all over the place um, once Jamil's book came out and his uh, Schwarzbier was uh, very prolific uh, the, the evolution kind of stopped or the variation kind of stopped it was just a little bit of derivation of of his recipe um, we'll see where that takes me on my uh, interpretation of what where this uh, recipe should be uh, original gravity um, when you see these wide sweeping ranges outside of the BJCB range, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about with the, with respect to um, the differences between the recipe, the wide interpretation people had. Um, anywhere between 1.041 to 1.070, the mean was right at the max. Um, pretty, pretty common for uh, competition styles. Um, 1.052 was the mean, and that's where I'm going to be with my recipe. IBUs, again, a huge range from 12 to 47. Uh, the average was 28 on the high side. Um, and I'm going to be at 23. And the reason is we're seeing a clear shift, good correlation coefficient here from Pearson's, showing a decrease in the IBUs over time, somewhere between 20 and 25. So I chose 23, I think, 22, I can't remember. I'll show you at the end um, to correlate to this um, this trend that we're seeing in IBUs. Uh, SRM, BJCP range 17 to 30. Um, again, a big sweep from 19 to 37. Uh, the average was 26.6, and I'm going to be just above the average at about 27 and a half. Um, average recipe uh, malts for the malts is 86.5% base malts. Next most common is crystal malts at around 5%. I'm sorry, roast malts at 7, crystal malts at 5, 1.3% uh, toasted malts, and 0.3% adjuncts. Uh, we are seeing a huge decrease in the number of t recipes using toasted malts, and I think it cut off here at about 2007. Uh, recipes after 2007 stopped using toasted malts altogether. This is kind of what I'm talking about. Huge uh, variation here, and then consistency, right? Um, on the uh, base malts, um, we're seeing a, a, an increase as well. Um, but again, more, more swayed by these data sets pre-brewing uh, classic styles than you know, these over here. So these are pulling that curve down. Um, so we're up, I'm sorry, the scale over here is for the blue curve. So up to about 90% base malt and to 0% over here, toasted malts. Um, if you look at the recipes that use these malts, 100% of course used uh, base malt. And my recipe um, is going to use right around 90% following that trend that I showed you previously. Uh, zooming in on the specialty malts, 100% of the recipes used some sort of roast malt, of course, it's signature for the style. Um, right at about 7% of the grist, average. Crystal malt, uh, about three quarters of the recipes used a crystal malt and an average of about 6% of the grist. And then toast malts down here, again, showing you that they tapered off to almost nothing. 
um, and um, adjuncts, just a couple recipes used in adjunct. Um, I'm going to use around 5% uh, roast malts and are, are about the same, a little bit less crystal in neither of these two. Um, when you look at the base malts, the most prolific is Pilsner. 93% of the recipes used a Pilsner malt at an average of 55% of the grist, ranging from about 7 to 87. So big, huge range of Pilsner malt, uh, the recipes. These, again, these are showing the variation in the recipes. Um, the next most common was uh, Light Munich. Um, we had 80% of the recipes used a Light Munich at an average of 34% of their grist. I'm going to talk about the Dark Munich. Um, we only had about 20, uh, one fifth of the recipes used a Dark Munich at between 10 and 55% of the grist. Um, the average was right around 30. Um, I am going to use uh, Pilsner at about 50%, Light Munich at about 20, and Dark Munich at about 20. And the reason why I chose Dark Munich is we're seeing um, an increase in the recipes that are using at least uh, Dark Munich at least and, and a mix of Dark and, and Light uh, Munich. Um, so I am going to choose both Munichs. I think it gives you good complexity. Uh, and I will be using Munich 1 and Munich 2 from Weirman, uh in this in this recipe. Uh, crystal malts, the most, most common was uh, Crystal Medium Crystal or Care Munich. Um, we had 41% of the recipes used a medium crystal on an average of about 5%. You can see the peaks here between 3 and 5 is the sweet spot for the style. Uh, the next most common is a light crystal, um, again around 5% of the grist. I'm going to use a medium crystal, actually a Care Munich, um, at a right around 5% of the grist. Toast malts, nothing really stood out. Um, the ones that were used were melanoidin, aromatic, uh, biscuit or victory, and honey malt. Um, again, not a lot of recipes out of the 54 used a toasted malt. Uh, roast malts, uh, most common was a chocolate malt or a carafa or carafa special. And most of them used a mix between an English, um, an English chocolate malt and carafa. So my recipe will reflect that as well, a mix between those two. Probably should have separated them out just to show what the distributions were. Um, but I haven't done that with any of my other recipes. So I'll just show you at the end the split that I chose. 92% um, of the recipes used a chocolate or carafa at an average of about 6% of the grist. Um, I'm going to use around 5, 5.5 five just because that's all I needed to get the color. You don't need any more. Um, you don't want a huge roast character in this style. Uh, other, other malts that were used in the roasted category, uh, roasted barley uh, was the next most prolific. About a, a quarter of the recipes used a roasted barley. Pretty significant. Some big winners in NHC use roasted barley as well in small proportions, around 2%. If you want to choose that, don't go above 2 There's one recipe that used about 19% uh, brown malt, which is a roasted malt. Black Prince was also used. It's very... Uh, um, it's not a harsh malt. I really like black brins, but I'm going to stick with what the uh, what the data is telling me for my recipe. Adjuncts, uh, flaked rice, oats, and corn. One recipe each. Not going to recommend it here. Uh, bittering hops. There were 15 different bittering hops used. Uh, Haller and Tet and Northern Brewer were the three most common. All German all the way around here, right? Um, and I'm going to be using Haller to bitter with. Uh, ten, re 10 different uh, flavor hops used. Again, Haller, Tet, Herzbrucker, three quarters of the recipes used that. Haller, more than half. I'm going to use Middle Fru as well. Aroma hops, 12 different aroma hops used. More than half Haller, Middle Fru. It's, it's fairly evident what you should be using here. Um, and I'll be using that for aroma hops. There was one recipe that used Haller as a dry hop. Um, I am not going to be using a dry hop for Schwarz beer. Okay, the rates of additions. The flavor addition is in red, and we had about three quarters of the recipe use a flavor addition, anywhere between 0 0.4 and 0, 0 0.04 and 0 0.3 ounce per gallon. The sweet spot was 0 0.12 and 0 0.1 for the aroma. Uh, aroma was using a little, uh, uh, a little bit less recipes, 65 versus 75 percent of the re of the recipes, but still enough to to use in mind that I'm going to pick. Um, 
I'm going to pick right at around 0 0.09 for both. Um, and the reason is we're seeing that number go down uh, for both flavor and aroma. I just show flavor here, but aroma was trending down. It, was, it wasn't enough to report back, but right around this 0 0.1 is uh, where we're seeing for both of those additions. Uh, mash type, the majority single infusion. We did have about a third using some sort of step mash, whether a decoction or a step. I'm going to stick with infusion here. Um, the rest temperatures, uh, we'd had one acid rest, uh, about a quarter of them used a protein rest, and um, about 15% used a beta rest, and again, the sacrification rest. Oh, that's going backwards. Alpha, my sacrification rest is, uh, average was 152 for an average of 60 minutes. The acid rest was one at 104 for 20 minutes. Uh, protein rest was 127 average or 53 Celsius for an average of around 30 minutes again. The beta rest was 145 Fahrenheit or 63 Celsius for right around 40 minutes. I am just going to stick with the single, uh, no step mashes here for me. I don't have any weed or any flaked or anything that I need to be doing a, a step mash with. Boil duration was anywhere between 60 and 120 minutes. An average was, was at 77 and I'm going to be at 75 um, just to get any DMS, uh, boil off any DMS needed. Um, the yeasts that were used, we had 13 different yeasts used. The most, most common was um, 3470. A third of the recipes used 3470. A quarter of them used uh, Weinstefan 206. Um, 838, we had a couple used Chico strain and then a bunch of different lager strains here uh, used as well. I'm going to stick with the most common, which is 3470. Um, and the re another validation of choosing that yeast is we're seeing an increase in the number of recipes using 3470 over time to right around 50% nowadays. Water chemistry, huge ranges in water chemistry again. Um, I'm going to be on the low end of calcium. I'm not going to have any magnesium. Right in the mean for sodium. Um, above the mean for sulfate and chloride because we're seeing calcium, sulfate, and chloride all increase since the first uh, reported water chemistry in 2012. And this is, you know, these are the averages for each year, so don't think that there's a few data points. There's quite a bit of data on water chemistry. So this correlated well. Look at these numbers. They, they correlated really well to say people are going from soft water to, you know, a minerally rich um, water profile for this style, and you'll see that reflected in my recipe. Uh, fermentation temperatures, they're all right there at 51 Fahrenheit, uh, big range between 46 and 60, but um, no, that's wrong. Um, 51 Fahrenheit is the temperature to use for this style, and that's what I'll be using for my recipe. I'm choosing uh, 830, so right here on the curve is where uh, I plan to ferment this beer. Other variables. Uh, carbonation 2.4 and mash pH was 5.42. All right, now for the recipe. Um, again, I'm going to use about 50% of Pilsner, 20% um, each of Munich 1 and Munich 2 from Weiermann. I'm going to use Care Munich 2, which kind of splits the difference between medium and um, light crystals. It's kind of right, right in the middle of what I'd classify them because they were both pretty high proportion, so I chose Care Munich 2. Uh, and then I'm going to use about um, two parts to one part chocolate malt from Crisp, an English chocolate malt, and one part um, Fireman Carafa Special 3, which is a dehust um, chocolate malt from Fireman. Um, that'll give me my color I need and hopefully less harshness. I would, will recommend there are quite a few recipes that mash capped at the end with their roasted. So they held back their roasted malts. And when they Vorloft at the end, that's when they um, added their roasted malts to the top. Um, I'll reflect this in my Brewfather recipe when, it's, uh, when you see it. I do recommend doing this because there were quite a few that actually did that. Um, again, I'm going to get about 15 or 16 IBUs of Howler Middle Fruit at 60 minutes. Um, I'm going to put in about, uh, let's see, 0 0.1 ounce per gallon of Middle Fruit at 20. 0 0.1 ounce per gallon, middle fruit at 5. I think this correlates about to 2 ounces total. Um, so perfectly, ended up perfect for a 5-gallon batch. 
Um, and I'm going to use White Labs uh, 830 or 2124 Y yeast. I know it's not on here, but that's that's the 3470 strain um, from Vine Stefan. I'm going to shoot for original gravity 1.052 and 22 IBUs. Um, my water chemistry is this, which will be on Brewfather. Um, shoot for a mash pH of 5.45. I'm going to do an infusion mash of 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius for 60 minutes. And I'm going to mash, mash out, do your... Um, before you start mashing out, that's when you add your roasted grains on top. Um, I'm going to sparge and boil for 75 minutes, um, which was the average. Chill it to 49 Fahrenheit or 9 Celsius. Oxygenate and pitch a, this would be a two liter starter in a five gallon batch. So big, big, pretty big starter of 3470. Uh, fermented at 51 or 11 Celsius. In a, and when it starts tapering off at the end, again, rise it up for that diacetyl rest. Hold it there for about a week. Um, you can cold crash or not. I usually transfer to a keg and cold crash in the keg. And all the yeast that drops out in the keg, I just pour it out with the first few uh, pours of my uh, on my tap. Carbonate to about 2.4 volumes, and you should have perfect. Um, the logger duration, didn't report it. I will put it in the description what the average logger duration uh, for the style is. I think it was around 50 days, but check the description and the Brewfather recipe for those details. All right, that's it. Um, next style, I'm not sure what it's going to be. I'll post it in the description. Um, again, it's another Patreon series, so whatever the next patron chose, that's what I'm going to choose and present on. Don't forget, uh, check out Bar Bacchus and Barley Corn, link in the description if you're interested in purchasing this kit. Um, I'll see you in about a week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.